I was born at Chachilla State Prison. I was born to a mother who was fighting murder at the time. And I got adopted at two days old by a single mom in Los Angeles County. And I was very sheltered as a child. It wasn't communicated to me about what was going on in my neighborhood. I wasn't told what happens when the street lights go off. I wasn't told about the men or the women that were hanging out on the corner selling drugs or women that were working. And by the time I was 11 years old, I ended up getting into an altercation actually. And I got into a fight um, at my middle school and I ended up being placed on probation, which led me to a juvenile hall. I sat in juvenile hall for about three months and my mother told the court she no longer wanted me in the home. So I was abandoned a second time by somebody that said that they loved me. My normal at 11 to 15 and a half years old was being sexually abused seven to 15 times a night. Every single day, my normal was thinking about, will I survive today? It was never a choice to wake up and say, I wanna be sex trafficked. This is a lifestyle that I wanna choose. There was not a safe person around me that I was able to talk to about it. It was very hard to get to the stage that I'm at right now at 27 years old. I came to OCC and I was unprepared. I didn't have the healing. I didn't have the therapy. You get kind of thrown out of the foster care system. So I left OCC. I failed all my classes. I felt disappointed in myself. I felt shameful for once again because I failed at something. And I remember I was working within those years that I had been absent. I started speaking nationally, going around the world, speaking, telling my story. I started training thousands of law enforcement officers on the trauma impact and how to do victim-centered approach. All of that was preparing me from the day that I was signing right back up and registering for my classes in OCC because now I was coming with a different lens and a perspective that I could do this. Life started to become hopeful because there were people that loved to do what they did unconditionally with no strings attached. The Guardian Scholars, the EOPS, and the CARE program has changed my life. I walk into those rooms and I feel community. I didn't just do this for me, I did it for my daughter. But I also did this for the other girls, the millions of other girls that are just like me, that don't think that they can have a fresh start in college, that they can't do this, that they weren't equipped because they, they can't.